Next question comes from Guy Smiley. Now, listen, Guy, I don't know if I've seen you in here before. This name seems new to me. So if I've not seen you before, welcome. Guy says, hey, Adam, great content. Thank you. A quick question about carving beer. Could you go through your carb stone, put, say, 13 to 14 PSI of pressure on your tank, and then take a hose from your blow-off arm back to the carb stone and let it carb itself? So you're, you're talking about essentially creating a loop. A, could you go through your carb stone, put, say, 13 to 14 PSI on the tank, and then from your blow-off arm back into the carb stone and let it carb itself? I think you could use less CO2, and you could keep checking it until you reach your desired volume. What are your thoughts on this? Well, okay, guy, and maybe you can give me uh, a little bit more, a little bit more info here. So you're thinking, input the gas into the tank, and then so you have the input going in through the carb stone, and then you're talking about going from like the the CIP arm of the tank back into the carb stone. So instead, rather dumping it to the atmosphere, that's what I'm assuming you're saying. Um, I'll answer it like this. My preferred way to carb a beer is to get it cold close to, you know, 32, 33 F or, you know, close to zero C because I prefer to be packaging that beer when it's very cold. Now, for the record, with these off the top of my head uh, conversions, and I know that one is is pretty easy, sometimes I flip-flop them. Um, you know, you have to try to rub my nose in it in the comments. You know who you are, because there's one of you that loves doing that. But um, what I prefer to do is... I I prefer to never have gas coming out of my bright tank, okay? So when I was at Cartridge and I had the time to, which is pretty much always did, rather than utilizing like a bleed and feed approach or a feed and bleed where you're feeding gas in through the stone, and then bleeding that additional pressure that you're pushing into the tank out the CIP arm. Rather than doing that, I prefer to have the tank sealed and pressure it up, okay? So a lot of times when I was at Cartridge, I would have, you know, five PSI on the fermenter and uh, it would be all bunked up and ready for transfer. And then I would put you know, more gas on that tank and then feed it into uh, the bright tank, um, you know, uh, going a, a little bit lower than the PSI it was at. And so I would get into the bright tank and I wasn't always all the way up at 10 or 12 PSI where, where the tank would traditionally be. Um, what I would then do is I would, with the tank closed, uh, I would, so for those bright tanks there at about 33 degrees, if I, if I got 10 PSI into solution into that beer at that temperature, it would give me a carb rate that I was happy with in general. So what I would do is, is I would take the 10 PSI I wanted and I would add four to five pounds because the carb stones I was using had a wetting pressure of four to five pounds. So that was the that's the amount of pressure you need to put on that stone in order to get the gas to start flowing through it. So what I would do is I would get the beer transferred in. There'd be five or six PSI in the tank once the transfer was done because that was essentially the pressure that was on the fermenter. And then I would hook my gas up to the stone and I would set it for the 10 PSI I wanted 
plus another four or five for the wedding pressure. And so, uh, and that was with some trial and error because I knew the max pressure that that would give me in the tank was 10. And I would hook that gas up and then I would take the little valve that I had on my, on my carb stone and I would listen. I'd put my ear on the tank and I would start cracking it very slowly until I heard that backflow preventer that was in it start to go just this little this little whirring sound which meant i was getting gas through and then i would just leave it um now there really isn't any danger to the tank in that scenario leaving that gas on like that overnight uh, because even if it did go up to 15 that tank is rated for 15 anyways and really it could probably only get up to 14 with the setup that i was using um, but typically i would get in in the morning it would be at 10 psi i would hit it with the old shake weight the old zaman nagel and i would have the carb that i wanted i do understand the idea of wanting to both save co2 um but one one reason that i i like to prevent some bleed and feed type concepts for carbing is i believe what i just described is potentially a more gentle way of carrying out that carbonation the more gently we carbonate our beer, the less foam positive proteins are denatured, leading to possibly better foam in that beer downstream. Okay. So that's my take on it. I do like what I do like about it is I do like that you are uh, brainstorming ways of, you know, both conserving uh, a costly raw material and um you know looking at through that lens and trying to problem solve through that's what we should be doing as brewers so i think that's awesome guy and uh if you are first time long time uh welcome it's uh it's good to see you in here